The Indiana football team was in a double overtime thriller on Saturday. We'll have the highlights and more from Memorial Stadium. Also, basketball season is back and the Hoosiers are off to a fast start. We got highlights and more on this episode of Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Tyler Ratz alongside Sam Lieberman. And Sam, we're starting to sound like a broken record, but it was the same script again for this Indiana football team. Another heartbreaking defeat. You're right, Tyler. It's starting to seem like every Saturday it's the same trend. IU plays great against these tough opponents, but can't seem to finish it out when it matters. And the team coming up just a little bit short. Let's take a look at the highlights. And here is Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh coming to Memorial Stadium for the first time in his coaching career. Let's pick things up right before the half. Nate Sudfeld lobs the screen pass right over the Michigan defense to a wide open Jordan Howard who easily takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. Now to the third quarter and after IU forced a Wolverine three and out, Mitchell Page is back to receive the punt. Watch this return. He catches it on the left side, takes it to the right side, breaks some tackles at midfield and nobody is going to catch Mitchell Page. He is gone. A 51-yard return for a touchdown, and the Hoosiers cut the Michigan lead to just one. This team is fired up, but the drama started late in the fourth quarter. IU still down one. Sudfeld hands it off to Jordan Howard, who takes it around the left end, and nobody is going to bring the running back down. He goes 24 yards for the touchdown. The Hoosiers would go for the two-point conversion, and it's Howard pounding it up the middle for the conversion, giving IU a seven-point lead with less than three to play. But here we go. Michigan facing a fourth and goal from the five. Five seconds remaining. Jake Rudock lobs it up to J.U. Cheston, and he catches it. Michigan ties the game with just two seconds remaining. We are headed to overtime. Harbaugh cannot believe what he just saw. Indiana gets the ball first in overtime, and guess who it is? None other than Jordan Howard, who punches it in from a yard out. The Wolverines would also score, sending us to a second overtime. And on the very first play, Michigan quarterback Jake Rudock finds a wide open Amara Darbo, 25 yards for the score. IU has to respond. Fourth and goal from the two. Sudfeld takes a snap. He wants Mitchell Page. He looks to have it for a second, but the ball falls incomplete. After running 18 straight plays on the ground, IU attempts a pass. It does not work. Game over. Michigan survives the Hoosiers in double overtime. 48-41. After the game, it was the two involved on the final play, Nate Sudfeld and Mitchell Page, talking about what could have been after yet another disappointing loss against a ranked opponent. I mean, it is frustrating. It's feeling so close, but um, I love my teammates more than anything, and I love you know what we're doing and our coaches, and I believe in what we do. And uh, it was really, I mean, it's again, we're just close. We just have to figure out a way to. To, to win the game, but and you know what, we, we believe in ourselves. A plays like the one that I did make, got to make those plays. Um, there's just a bunch of, like it comes down when you're playing great teams like Michigan, comes down to just a couple plays. It's important going this way, important going that way. We're frustrated, we, we want to win, and uh, we're just trying to do everything we can to win, but everybody still believes in the process, believes in what we're doing, believes in each other and uh, we just have to figure out ways to make the plays when they count. I felt for whatever reason today was just going to be different. Uh, I'm tired of losing, that's for sure. <laughs> we're, we're tired of it. Uh, this is going to be the, this is the group. This group that we have is going to, we're going to change this program and we've got to start winning games like that. And I thought that was going to be the one. I felt that was going to be the one all week. We had such a good week of practice. Uh, and it was just a couple of plays that we didn't make, so. And the Hoosiers will travel to Maryland for the first time since 1935 on Saturday to take on the Terrapins before traveling to Purdue in the season finale for the Old Oaken Bucket. Right, IU will have to win both of those games to get to six wins on the year if they want any chance of making a bowl game this season. Now let's transition from football to basketball and the Indiana Hoosiers defeated Austin P 102 to 76 on Monday night. We'll talk about this game, Sam. Let's start off with the bad. The turnovers killed the Hoosiers. You see 76 points for Austin P, and a lot of that came off of the Indiana turnovers. That's right. IU had 20 turnovers on the night, and Austin P was finding a way to convert those turnovers into points. So 
IU needs to find a way to hold on to that basketball and not give the opponent these opportunities. And when they did hold on to the basketball, this offense was a lot of fun to watch. Up tempo, scoring a lot of points, and these fans are very excited for what could be this season with the Hoosiers. That's right. The Hoosiers were stroking from beyond the three-point line. Nick Zeisloft, Yogi Ferrell, and James Blackman Jr. combined for 13 for 18 from behind the arc. So as long as that three-point shot continues for the Hoosiers this year, they got a bright season ahead of them. And Brandon Farkas has more on that great shooting performance from the Hoosiers in the second half. <laughs> It's no secret that the Indiana men's basketball team has the ability to be one of the best scoring attacks in all of college basketball this season. In the second half of Monday's game against Austin P, the Hoosiers showed just how lethal their offense can be when the team is firing on all cylinders. Hard to find a lot of criticisms when you make 15 straight shots. I'm not sure I'd ever been a part of it. Well, I don't think I've ever been a part of 15 straight made shots. But I think it came because of really good movement of the ball. And, and we our spacing was much better tonight than it was on this past uh, Friday night. Well, um, an emphasis this game was um, our spacing. Our spacing wasn't very consistent last game, um, and our break wasn't very consistent either. So those two things definitely helped us tonight. The Hoosiers' offensive versatility was especially evident during the 15 consecutive made shots. The spacing and ball movement allowed for eight made three-pointers throughout the streak, while another six baskets came from fast break situations. But no one on the IU bench was keeping count during the 11-minute stretch. No, I don't, I'm sure nobody, nobody was aware, but uh, you know, it's just a product of our work that we do every day with uh, how we shoot. I was oblivious. I knew it was going in, the shooting. I didn't really realize it. So. That part would be fun to watch, but it was a lot of that. It was it was getting, it was the break. It was getting some really good looks on the break. They were playing very loose, uh, but but effective. The fast pace of the game caused IU to be careless at times, resulting in 20 turnovers. As the season moves along, Crean will want to reduce that number, but he doesn't want to restrain too much of his team's offensive creativity. We spend a lot of time building our our mindset of attacking. And so we just want to be critical of when it was an obvious poor decision. But I don't want to put them in a situation where they're not trying to make plays because that would harness uh, a, lot of, a lot of playmakers. And we, we have a playmaking offense, right? Make plays for others. And the more we do that, it's amazing how much it goes back to each other. You know, we had five guys in double figures tonight. So that's a huge part of that. The Cream and Crimson look to continue their impressive shooting while limiting their turnovers against the Creighton Blue Jays as part of the inaugural Gavit tip-off games on Thursday night. From Assembly Hall, I'm Brian Farkas, Hoosier Sports Night. Not one, not two, but three Hoosiers made the preseason watch list for the John Wooden Award to be named the best player in college basketball. Troy Williams, James Blackman Jr., and of course Yogi Ferrell were all put on the ESPN's list of top 50 players to win the award. Only Kentucky had as many players in the watch list with three of their own. Great news for the men's basketball team this Thursday as IU's top recruit Deron Davis committed to be a Hoosier for the 2016-2017 season. The 6'9", 4-star forward from Aurora, Colorado signed his commitment after a three-year recruitment from the IU coaching staff. Davis joins Crown Point guard Grant Galon and Huntington prep guard Curtis Jones in IU's 2016 recruiting class. The Indiana women's basketball team is currently still alive in the preseason women's NIT. After defeating Tennessee State in the opening round on Friday, 88-56, before defeating 24th ranked Chattanooga on Tuesday night, 54-43. I actually had the pleasure of broadcasting Friday's game against Tennessee State, and if there's one thing that stands out to me with this team, it's that Indiana defense. That's right. The women's defense has been playing outstanding so far. They actually held Tennessee State to only 14 points in the whole first half, and then when they played 24-ranked Chattanooga, held them to only 43 points the entire game. Carly Murata was there, and she has more on the women's game. Indiana took on Chattanooga for the second round of the preseason WNIT tournament. Their victory over the ranked team can be credited to the heart and toughness that each player brings to this court. We played pretty tough tonight. It wasn't just that we played solid defensively. I thought there was a toughness about us, uh, which is an intangible 
thing that I, I love um, and, and give those kids credit because, like I said, it took all of them. I think we've uh, worked really hard these past couple days of practices. We scouted, um, we scouted them, and uh, I thought we followed our game plan really well, and uh, we came out and we were ready to play. And, um, I know a lot of us were excited uh, um, to, you know, finally um, play a ranked team, you know, right at the beginning of the season, and um, it's going to test us uh, for later on down the road, and I thought uh, we did really well. They've worked extremely hard. Uh, in the off season and, and in preseason and up until this point. Um, they're a great group of young ladies. They, they really are. Indiana will now travel to DePaul for the semifinals of the WNIT preseason tournament. They will keep the thought in mind that the toughness of their non-conference schedule is great preparation for the regular season. From Assembly Hall, I'm Carly Murata, IUS TV Sports. Thank you, Carly. This is the first of three tournaments that the Indiana women's basketball team will play in to start the season to bolster that non-conference schedule. As always, we will have continued coverage of the Indiana women's basketball team. When we come back, we talk soccer, cross-country, volleyball, and swimming. Also, IUS TV's Dimitri Babaris has got all the Big Ten highlights from Saturday's football games. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. And it's an honor to be here. After suffering a season ending injury in late March, as you can see behind me. soccer team fell to the Maryland Terrapins in the semifinal of the Big Ten Tournament. Tanner Thompson scored in the 40th minute to even the match at one, which is where the score would remain until penalty kicks. After six rounds of PKs, the Terrapins were victorious 3-2. The Hoosiers finished the season with a 12-4-3 record. The news is not all bad, however. Indiana reached its 29th straight NCAA tournament, earning the number 16 overall seed. The Hoosiers will face the winner of UConn and Boston University in a second round match on Sunday, November 22nd here in Bloomington. Men's rugby was in Rockford, Illinois this past weekend for the Big Ten Rugby Championships. Sports reporter Jacques Rozier was on the pitch for what turned out to be a historic weekend for the Hoosiers and the Big Ten. Sunny days keeping the clouds away with the not-so-friendly neighbors of the Big Ten meeting where championship air is sweet. Highlights brought to you by the letter C and the number two. First up, B-side getting Wisconsin again this week, but the Badgers must have missed class on the pitch last Saturday. Closing out the first half, score begins with the letter S. S also begins Sam Abondo, dishing out a remedial course for the Badgers, who must have forgotten in just one week the big boys up front can score too. Lauren McSorley says, get your pencils and take a few notes, Wisconsin. That's how you get two more on the scoreboard. No time to be a grouch in the second half. Harrison McGee warming into the try zone, adding five to the Hoosier score. Still in the second half, no calculators. Use your fingers on either hand. Ian Mulcrony over the line like his mama taught him. And B-side giving another counting lesson to Wisconsin, beating the boys in red for the second week in a row, this time 33-5. to five. C stands for championship, but that's not good enough for me. The number on the day is two. A-side gets the nighttime match against Ohio State, and did the Scarlet and Gray come to play? Yes, they did, keeping this one interesting with a 14-all tie at halftime. Second half action, the Hoosiers shopping for a trophy, decide to hit the lines at the mall. Let's rewrite OSU's fight song. Drive, drive on down the field. Men of the crimson and cream, 
Oh, oh, no, the Hoosiers have five in mind. Balls out to Jonathan Inari. Bryce Campbell with the quick pass to Teddy Terraces, and he knows sharing is what good friends do. Jake Adalgo with the please and thank you. Hands off the merchandise unless you're giving up five. Conversion good. Indiana goes up 21 to 14. With a close game, Indiana settles for a kick. Keep your eye on the white poles or the blue flags. It's good. Indiana leads 24 to 14. Deep inside Ohio State territory again, Alex Doria calls himself the Amazing Mumford. Grubba dub dub rubber ducky. These fancy feet cost the Buckeyes one, two, three, four, five. More on the scoreboard. Hoosiers, one trophy, two trophies from the Big Ten championships. Ah, ah, ah. Indiana becoming the first program in the history of the Big Ten Conference to capture the championship on A-side and B-side. The Hoosiers take the show on the road to North Carolina this weekend with a match against Kutztown at 8.30 on Saturday. For Hoosiers Sports Night, I'm Jacques Rozier. The men's and women's cross-country teams competed in the Great Lakes Regional on Friday. The men finished in fifth place overall while the women finished in seventh. But it was the four Hoosiers that earned all region awards at the event that made headlines. IU's very own Amanda Benke, Rory Hunter, Jason Chris, and Kyle Duvall all earned the honors this past Friday. Both teams failed to receive at-large bids for the NCAA championships. For the first time since October 2013, the women's volleyball team defeated Michigan State, taking down the Spartans in four sets. Junior Allison Hammond led the team with 16 kills, and as a whole, the Hoosiers recorded 13 aces, tying the second most aces in school history. Indiana improved to 15 and 11 on the year, and next up for the Hoosiers is eighth ranked Nebraska. IU swimming and diving had a big win on Friday as both the men and women swept Wisconsin at home. The men's team moved to four and six on the season, while the women evened out their record at five and five. After helping the Hoosiers defeat Wisconsin this past week, diver Lacey Hauser and swimmer Miranda Tucker earned weekly Big Ten honors on Wednesday. The teams head up to Indianapolis for the weekend for the IUPUI Invitational. And we're now joined in studio by Dimitri Bubaris for this week's Big Ten highlights. Yeah, thanks Tyler. I mean, another heartbreaker for Indiana. You're really surprised to see the Hoosiers play call. Take the ball outside of Jordan Howard's hands. 18 straight runs and the option to pass on the last play. And it almost felt like the Super Bowl all over again where the Seahawks choose not to run, see what happens there. The Hoosiers choose not to run, see what happens this past Saturday. That's a good comparison. Take a look at the top five in the playoff poll. Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, and Notre Dame all bolster high-profile recruits. But sitting at number five in the rankings and outside looking in are the Iowa Hawkeyes, a blue-collar team that lacks a single five-star recruit and only eight four-star recruits. Could Iowa continue its magical season? We'll get to that in a bit. Start things off in East Lansing. Connor Cook pulled after the opening drive, so in comes Tyler O'Connor. O'Connor all day in the pocket, fires a strike to McGarrett King, Spartans up 7-zip. Later in the first, Cook back in, and it's RJ Shelton for 21 yards. But Cook clearly shaken up, and you'll see just why. Cook lands on his throwing hand. He would not return in the second half. But that's all right because the Michigan State run game would take over. Gerald Holmes from three yards out. Michigan State wins 24-7 and slides up four spots to nine in the playoff poll. Nebraska at Rutgers. What a ride it's been for Tommy Armstrong and the Huskers this season. Early second, Nebraska 14-0. And Armstrong buying time with his feet and throws the deep ball for Alonzo Moore. 44 yards for the score, 21-zip Huskers. Third quarter, Rutgers pulls within seven until Armstrong off his back foot, throws the jump ball to Seath and Carter. That'll do it. Huskers take it 31-14. JT Barrett returning from that one-game suspension. Number three, Ohio State on the road at Illinois. Late first quarter, Barrett off the play fake to Michael Thomas for 24 yards. Can't toss it any better than that. Buckeyes up seven zip. Then just before the half, Barrett going to keep it himself. 14-3 Ohio State. Second half was all Ezekiel Elliott punches that one in from a couple yards out. Then in the fourth, Elliott hits the hole and paid her. 181 on the ground for Elliott. 28-3 Ohio State the final. Purdue at number 18 Northwestern and the Cats ran wild Saturday. Early first, Warren Long finds the seam and is gone. 32 yards, Northwestern up seven. Jump to the fourth, tied at 14, and Clayton Thorson on third down does this. Makes a play with his feet to extend the drive. How about that from the quarterback? 
That will eventually set up this Justin Jackson two-yard touchdown. That's your game winner, 21-14 Northwestern. And despite the loss, Northwestern drops two spots to 20 in the playoff poll. All right, over to Iowa City, number five, Iowa in the All Blacks against Minnesota. Second quarter, tied at seven, but not for long. C.J. Beathard keeps the bootleg play fake, drops into the end zone, Hawkeyes up seven. Fourth quarter, Hawkeyes up five, and LaShawn Daniels makes one cut, and he's gone. 51 yards, Daniels finished with 195 and three scores, but the Gophers would march right back downfield, first and goal, and Shannon Brooks fights his way in from three yards out. Minnesota still trailing 40 to 35 after the extra point. Gophers line up for the onside kick, but it goes out of bounds. That's Iowa's football. Hawkeyes win it by that score and remain a perfect 10-0 on the season and stay at number five in the college football playoff poll. All right, well, that'll do it for week 11. No shakeup in the college football playoff poll top five. Plenty of playoff implications online, however, in the final two weeks of the Big Ten schedule. And just looking at these potential matchups, you have Ohio State, Michigan State on Saturday. Of course, Ohio State, Michigan to end the season. And then one of those three teams with a date against Iowa in the Big Ten championship. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Dimitri, for always gracing us with your presence. Alongside Tyler Ratz and Dimitri Babaris, I'm Sam Learman. Remember to follow us on Twitter and so all other forms of social media at IUSTV Sports. Thank you for watching this episode of Hoosier Sports Night. Tune in again next week. Woo